let us take this first topic of uh, localization and uh, try and see what are all the things that uh, we should cover in this uh, course. See I, when you talk about IoT uh, applications and if you are talking about localization as a horizontal across all uh, applications that we are building in an IoT you can look at different type of sensors. Let me draw your attention to what I have written on this board on this uh, screen here. IoT sensors in this course particularly with respect to this course we look at RFID, we look at IMU, we look at hall sensors and we look at pressure sensors. These are the main sensors that we are going to work with for localization. It appears strange to you perhaps that nowhere GPS actually is shown and that is the key you are not really looking at anything with respect to localization with GPS systems because GPS has its own problems it has its own advantages and so on. So, we may have to use an indirect way of measuring distances and from distances I try to arrive at localization of these sensors right. So, now if you look at RFID and look at what are these applications that will require RFID ok. Let me start putting some of the um, applications uh, in forward to you. Take a large warehouse ok. When you say warehouse it could be uh, a warehouse where there are garments ok. There can be garments, there can be jewellery, jewellery or it could be a departmental store departmental store where we go and buy groceries right. We go and buy groceries right. So, all these essentially have lot of items lot of items and keeping inventory of these items is a tedious task. Today uh, there is a what is known as a um, barcode right each of these items have a barcode and they are barcoded and placed in a particular rack. And each time a customer picks an item, the uh, item is put into a basket and brought in front of the point of sale system. There the barcode is read, the amount is deducted and then there is a billing which we are all familiar with. This is fine as far as barcodes are concerned, this is fine, it is all fine. Supposing you want to uh, have inventory, you want to do inventory, this barcode is not going to help you at all, right. It is only for billing, it is only meant to know the item and so on and so forth. It cannot tell you where and how many of these numbers are available, right. Which means um, if it anything with respect to inventorying them is not going to work. So, that for that, what people have done is they said this is a dumb way of doing, barcode is good, but it is dumb. Let us now try and um, uh, replace it with something much more useful something more uh, interactive. So, they replaced gradually they started replacing the barcodes with RFID tags. These are a passive the costs are not uh, down to earth, but costs are falling all the time. You can buy a RFID inlay for less than uh, 15 rupees or so. If you go and look at the previous course you will know about readers uh, interrogation and all that. You can do all of that. So, this inventory business can be solved. You can do inventory and you can get to know the numbers. For example, you are looking at pickles, right, or you are looking at poppet, you are looking at uh, amount of rice bags that are there, or the uh, lentils that are there, or something like that. You want to know what is the quantity available. So, each tag, let us say if it reads a tag, you will know that the tag uh, corresponds to some amount of weight and some amount of uh, quantity and so on. So, that is solved. So, is that going to be enough? Well, the answer is no. You are not only interested in the inventorying the uh, items in a departmental store, you also are interested in knowing where the item is available. Because when you enter a pharmaceutical shop or pharmaceutical pharmacy, if you enter, the man who is managing it exactly knows where paracetamol is available and so on. And so it is purely based on a human's uh, memory uh, of placement of an item and is able to quickly pick it up. 
sometimes he or, he or she also gets confused on where that item is. So, if you are talking of hundreds and thousands of items in a in a pharmacy, in a departmental store or in a jewellery shop or in a garment uh, um, warehouse, it is almost impossible if you do not get to know where an item is right. You may need this kind of uh, uh, localization of where a garment is not necessary from a shopkeeper's perspective. You may also want to know from a customer's shopping experience perspective. You might have seen this in malls that are coming up now as you enter a mall um, and you have your Bluetooth on. Bluetooth uh, has uh, even in the previous course I mentioned this I can just going to recap. There are what are known as good beacon technologies which are available right. There is the Apple iBeacons uh, which is a very popular way you put low uh, transmit power beacons on let us say a particular garment rack and that rack is telling you. Uh, it is an attractive offer which is available and as you move closer and closer it will tell you where that rack is. So, it is also if you have a nice application on your mobile phone it can actually direct you to that particular uh, garment rack uh, which is giving you a good offer to buy. So, it is also from that perspective you need localization right. So, let us not look at that because that is a very standard thing you can use Apple iBeacons and there is an equivalent Android. Uh, uh, beacon technology which is available which can and you build an application on your Android phone uh, you, as you move into the departmental store it will tell you uh, it will direct you to different uh, locations within the uh, departmental store and you will be able to pick an item. And as you move forward the next departmental store or the next uh, you know shop there will essentially deploy similar technologies and uh, you will be attracted towards those uh, places if you are interested in shopping. Uh, having a good shopping experience right. But now let us look at the problem for the uh, shop owner let us look at it from an invent just not the inventory purpose, but also from localization of these uh, of these garments. You also look at it this way right when customers come uh, during a festival season several of these customers pick these garments try them on and uh, maybe sometimes in trial room sometimes just look at it and you know move to the next rack and leave it there. So, they are misplaced and you need to put it back in its respective uh, location. Sometimes uh, garments can also be um, mistakenly or otherwise can also be removed from the shop without billing right. So, you may also want to detect those uh, situations right. So, all these things essentially mean that unless you localize correctly the solution is not complete not just about tagging items not from a point of sale items not just limiting yourself to inventorying them, but also localizing them right. All of it should happen over millions of th hundreds thousands and uh, millions of items which are there inside these departmental large departmental uh, stores um, you know huge shopping malls essentially and uh, so lot of items out there. So, RFID has been a technology which people have uh, sort of been using and uh, tags as I said have no power. So, let us look at passive RFID tags and readers ok. Now, what is the core algorithm uh, that one should use in order to localize that is the focus of this course. Here we can look at two things one is we can look at what is available from the tag to the reader. Now, before we get into that detail you have to come up with an idea of what is the scenario under which you want to localize. Scenario can be the following if you go into any departmental store there are corridors in which you have items on either side and then there are there is place for the human to move to look around on either side to pick what he or she wants right. So, there is a nice guiding path. Uh, which is available to you and this is something that uh, you may want to exploit as and when you want to do localization that is one part. The second part is it is almost humanly impossible for humans to do all these kind of activities. Uh, sometimes in some applications humans are a must in some applications it may perhaps be just enough that you make an automatic uh, process where you switch on a robo 
uh, just before you put down the shutters of your uh, sh uh, shop and then let the robo go uh, into all these little uh, paths that have been created uh, pathways that have been created for humans to move and then it sort of localizes all the tags. Uh, it inventories and localizes all the tags and by the time you open the shutter in the morning you have a nice email or perhaps some way of visualizing it and say, telling you where items are and what are the items that have to be uh, adjusted, removed, replaced, put back so on and so forth. So, once you get the localization information you can use it in different ways. So, the scenario that we can consider and we should be considering is can we put up a robotic platform which will do localization of all the tags uh, and it will be able to tell you where a tag is located. It should tell you the x y location of the tag. Let us assume z is fixed because uh, that will be a little more harder, but let us just keep it at x y which is already very good it will tell you where the tag is. So, you need algorithms for x y location of the tag of the uh, of the uh, tags right. So, that is one thing we have to do. What are the signatures available for doing this? One is you can use simple ranging uh, which uh, essentially means you can use received signal strength. The received signal strength can be a sort of somehow related to the distance between the tag and the reader that is situated. So, somehow you should be able to infer that, but that is hard right. So, because um, RSSI is not a very reliable way of measuring. Uh, distances between tags and readers simply because the environment keeps changing and uh, reflections are there inside uh, these kind of indoor environments and therefore, uh, what you read um, as an RSSI value today at this instant may not be easily uh, repeatable soon after. So, that is RSSI is perhaps not a good way you must find some other way if you take any signal one of the things attributes of any signal is the phase. So, phase is a good way to measure the distance between the tag and the reader. So, let us see how phase based approaches can be applied and algorithms on top of them for processing the tag reads. For example, you may want to do clustering. Clustering algorithms are applied on a bunch of x y locations okay, to arrive at the correct x y location of a tag. Uh, there are several clustering algorithms which people talk about. They talk about k means clustering, they talk about db scan and all that. So, we will look at db scan because it is a very popular way of uh, uh, applying a clustering algorithms um, for these bunch of uh, x y locations. So, you read, you do some processing like clustering and so on uh, with some very good probability you arrive at this is where the location of the tag is. This is as far as RFID is concerned. Now, let us turn our attention. So, this part is done right. So, this is all done. Now, let us turn our attention to IMUs. Here uh, one would be interested in looking at the I, when I say IMU I mean the inertial measurement units which are commonly available on most mobile phones. You have magnetometer, you have accelerometer and you have gyroscopes or gyroscopes. Uh, gyroscopes give you rotations per second, accelerometer gives you in uh, meters per second square and magnetometer gives you magnetic field intensity in micro tesla. Essentially it will give you a value the magnetometer will give you a value in micro tesla which is an indicator of how much uh, in angle you are away from the magnet earth's magnetic north. So, it will give you a number. So, that way you have to use this tesla and convert it back into angle. So, that and that there is a standard way to do it let us I will give you some pointers uh, which will allow you to look at those uh, equations which are essentially used the little formula that are used uh, which will allow you to convert the magnetic uh, tesla uh, magnetic field intensity measured in micro tesla into the angle away from the earth's magnetic north. So, where can you apply this? Think of situations where uh, you may want to use IMUs in indoor location of uh, humans, right. So, as you know, most humans carry mobile phones, and uh, you are interested in reaching a particular um, office or a particular location inside a commercial building, you are interested, okay. And you have the map of the building, it is multi floor, 
you have the map of the building and you are interested in getting guided to that particular uh, location inside the building. Now as you know building will have multiple floors right. So you may have to know and each floor may actually look identical. So you may actually have to solve the problem of on which floor you are okay and then you must say if I am on the right floor how do I reach that particular office or lab or particular uh, if it is a cafeteria where do you reach the cafeteria and so on and so off that particular floor and so on. Uh, you may want to use IMUs for that kind of localization applications and use these sensors which I mentioned to you like accelerometer, gyro and magnetometer available in phones. So here the scenario is the one in this course is we are going to look at mobile phone as a IoT device we will build small applications which will allow us to localize on a map tell you quite accurately where you are on a particular floor of a building okay. It is a hard problem again because the sensors IoT sensors that we are looking at are quite noisy you know applying certain filters on these sensors is an important requirement and we will have to see what are the minimal things that you may have to do so that you get the right kind of uh, data point with which you can use for the purposes of uh, localization. So that is what we will try and cover in uh, the IMU part of the uh, localization. Then the third one here that you see is um, okay before I go to the third I must also tell you that it is easy to look at the fourth. I already mentioned to you that floor detection is a very important requirement right uh, in the indoor localization using IMUs. Unless you know on which floor you are uh, reaching that cafeteria or lab or any other point is not going to be easy. Therefore you may have to use a sensor like a pressure sensor essentially a uh, pressure sensor is a barometer it measures you can see here that uh, the value of uh, the barometer will measure in terms of millibar. Uh, I put down some numbers here this 101.325 kPa is kilopascals is the pressure at sea level uh, which can be equally represented as 14.7 psi. So 101.325 kilopascal 14.7 psi are one and the same they are the same. Just to give you an idea that in different applications different notes that you read you will see pressure in kPa pressure in psi and so on uh, in mobile phones it will also give you in millibar um, and floor to floor if you change in a mobile phone you will see that the value changes from 0 0.2 uh, to, uh, to 0 0.3 okay. So that is the change in the millibar. Supposing you are reading 903.1 millibar in, a, in one floor you will essentially read 903.3 max maximum in the above floor. See why there is a change is also because of the amount of height that you climb. Sometimes floor to floor is 10 feet, sometimes floor to floor is 8 feet and so on and so forth. That height uh, difference can give you little bit change in value. But quite accurately the value will change by 0.2 or 0.3 which is a good indicator that if you start from ground floor and as you move up to the fourth floor or fifth floor for every floor you will get this difference right. So it will become a significant uh, number as you move up uh, in terms of uh, number of floors that you cross. So uh, quite accurately you will be able to estimate on which floor you are if you use pressure sensors uh, particularly the barometer which is part of most IoT devices like mobile phones. Finally let us look at hall sensor. Supposing you are in a situation where you are traversing a tunnel let us say okay. You are in a vehicle you are in a car or, or in a two wheeler uh, and you are inside a tunnel and there is no way by which you can get access to uh, GPS uh, signals okay. But what you have with you is a map which you can easily get from Google maps or because map technology is separate we should not get into the detail but just use uh, maps which are already available. But 
for people who are interested in building their own maps uh, there are open street maps which you can download and build your own um, applications with using open street maps because Google maps and other maps which you see on your phones uh, if you are using it for commercial purposes you have to pay Google okay. So, there is a charging model which uh, Google has. So, so, essentially but for personal use I think there is no problem in the everybody uses them quite freely now. So, suppose you have the map with you no GPS information is available to you. So, you may have to essentially count the wheel rotations okay. So, let us assume that you have to count the wheel rotations which will tell you what is the linear distance that you are covering somehow you need to get to that right. So, one can use hall sensors. So, when we talk about uh, wheel rotation we will essentially put the hall sensor on the frame and will put a magnet on the rim of the vehicle okay. And every time the magnet crosses the hall sensor there is a certain amount of voltage induced in the hall sensor and that will tell you uh, that one rotation is completed. Hall sensors with magnets essentially to arrive at how much distance uh, you have covered. Now, that will not be enough by just counting the distance, but because you will be taking turns you will be going uh, taking a left or a right turn and so on. So, you will need assistance of other uh, sensors and other sensors typically are uh, magnetometer sensors have to be used for uh, purposes of uh, com combined with the hall sensors will tell you something about the uh, location of an automobile inside a tunnel. So, let us see if we can arrive at uh, how to use these hall sensors and magnetometers in co in, uh, in combination to see how do you track or localize a vehicle outdoor, but without any information about um, the uh, GPS ok. There is another thing I uh, want to also tell you about this uh, pressure information. Pressure information is uh, not just about floor detection, um, but also in uh, there are other applications for use of pressure uh, sensors ok. One of the things is let us say you are going from uh, point A, you are going from point A to point B. Okay. So, let me take another new sheet let us say this is pressure right pressure based localization pressure based localization. Supposing you are moving from point A to point B. Let us say there are at least two routes, one route is to so this is a route ok. So, this is a route you go from here and then you reach this point and then this is one route ok. And then there is a second route which essentially takes you up like this and then gets you down like this. So, this is root A uh, since I have used A and B I will use X and Y right I will use X and Y. So, there is root X and root Y. Now, it is quite easy for you um, to also apply pressure information to see um, and just mark some points here which will tell you that you are asked to take a particular route let us say you are asked to take route y and not root x. Um, here it is quite easy if you use pressure based localization because uh, you know that uh, pressure if you take point this root y never exceeds a certain threshold. Whereas, if you take x you will see that there is a difference. You could also verify for instance verify roots verify a root verify a route if you use the simple pressure uh, sensors uh, and you can convert pressure to elevation right 
if you know pressure you can convert it into elevation and vice versa you know here that the elevation was low as compared to the elevation there plot the elevation profile and then arrive at whether the vehicle that was asked to take uh, y root y actually chose root y or not. This information can be stored locally inside the sensor node and at point b it can simply be read off and then uh, you just quickly plot with, with a few sensor values and then you know whether uh, it has actually crossed that threshold and simple threshold is sufficient to arrive at whether um, uh, the uh, path the route chosen was right or wrong. You do not have to just do threshold you can actually plot the whole route and you will see that the sensors uh, sensor value will tell you this this kind of a nice will give you values quite like this and we will try and see if we can reconstruct uh, taking a example and uh, arriving at uh, uh, localization using this kind of um, pressure based uh, sensors. In summary this course is not so much about GPS uh, and all that but it is about how IOT applications can be built with uh, these IOT uh, applications with IOT sensors uh, can actually assist aid in solving very large problems of uh, localization of, um, of sensor nodes ok. This is in summary. Uh, let us now move on to see a few demonstrations of these applications. We will get into the details and then we will uh, then uh, build other applications uh, in, in terms of trying to complete this particular module.